All right, here we go. Good to get it right this time. So here we are in my 18 my Hornet, getting up into some altitude here up in the Andes. Um, I feel like this thing isn't scaled quite right, but I'm not going to worry about it too much. It looks good enough. So uh, we're going to go up against this flanker here in a minute. We're both armed with a couple of uh, IR missiles. I've got my 9Xs. He's got his 73s. Guns are loaded. And that's it. So get a little altitude up here. I want to be above my opponent. And I'm going to manage to get a lock on him here in a minute as we close range on each other. And I'm pushing Mach 1. And I'm going to resist the Ursa shootout because I know he's going to pop a shitload of flares, which he does. Um, and instead, defend against the missile, I know he's going to shoot at me. So that means I'm going to pull the cut my throttles out of afterburner, which I'm probably on right now, especially if I'm moving this fast at this altitude. Cut my throttles and start popping those flares as I do a corkscrew maneuver after he fires at me. So we see in just a moment. There we go. It's breaking the sand barrier there. There's our flares. That's my corkscrew here. It's not very smooth. It smoothed out a little bit towards the end, but it was kind of sloppy in the beginning, but that's okay. His missile misses me. He's down a missile. And now we can start trying to counterattack against him. And I managed to pull him into a one circle fight and drop flares for no particular reason. It was kind of dumb. I should really tune up my flare program so it drops more at a quicker interval. I think that'll help. So I'm only successful about half the time. That almost hit him, by the way. When we'll see an attack view, see, I actually came pretty close to his tail. If I'd leaded him, just let him just a little bit more, I would have definitely damaged his plane if not taking it down. And then I waste about four more bursts here. He was too far away, just over a mile away. Ended up at about 1.3 nautical miles when I was done shooting. And so maneuvering, that was just wasted ammo. But then I managed to get a nice lock. And away goes the Sidewinder. And I don't know if you just didn't see it or what, but he didn't pop his flares and he died. He did, well, he didn't die. He actually did pop a parachute. So he survived, but the plane was destroyed. So excellent. We blew that guy up. Splash one bad guy, good one for the good guys. And let's see what that looks like in tack V. So here I am again. I'm pulling some uh, altitude here. Um, you know, I, you know, I don't know. Okay. Uh, if one of these, is this a label? I'm not going to spend too much time with this. No. Okay. Okay. Forget it. Let's just run it. So we're going to run this in real time. There I am getting that altitude there. Just like I started out in the replay. Did I just, why did I do that? Oh, I was testing my program. I have an old program that drops two flares and two chaff. And then my primary was going to drop um, 10 flares at a, I believe it's a half second interval, but I feel like it's not dropping them uh, that fast. So I might have forgotten to set that. Anyway, here I am rolling over to level out there. Yep. And now we're going to go ahead and close distance on our target. As I gain speed, start breaking that sound barrier again. We're going to lock the guy up with our sidewinders. And he's not going to know we're doing that because there's no way to detect that like you can with radar. But it doesn't matter. We're going to lock the guy up anyway because he's there. And we're going to wait for him to fire, defend, and then wait for a better solution to fire because he's going to drop flares. And what I've noticed about these um, SU and MIG flyers is they tend to drop flares a lot. And which is good because he drops so many flares so quickly and early that if you wait a little while, um, they're going to be a little more conservative about their flares. They'll just flat run out and they're basically screwed. So here we go. There's our sloppy corkscrew. That's why the flares are spewing out, but it worked in my favor. There goes the missile. Here comes our overlap here. here comes the merge right there. And I managed to pull him into a one circle fight because then I see that and I start to roll to the right to get a quick solution to fire on him. And then I see the flares. I switch to the gun and then I take a nice good burst and then right there. So let's scroll this way. That was really, really close. 
that was very close. So if I had just led him like 10, 15 feet in front, it would have scraped right along the back there. 20, 30 feet would have scraped right along his spine. It would have been beautiful. Oh, well, you know, these, it's, it's not bad. It was a good shot. Unlike the next four, which were just terrible, I never should have done. There he is, drop it. See all those flares. And they're doubles, too. I should probably switch to that. So they seem very effective, frankly. I, I really have to make sure there, if there's flares out, I am not firing a missile. That's what I've learned with these guys. Okay, there's the four successive wasted fires of ammo. And then here's where, again, because I'm behind him, I'm able to roll in him and get that lock with the sidewinder. And here comes our kill shot right bam right there and that's it this is a nice maneuver uh just kind of came in behind him and again you know just building momentum at the right points and then cutting throttles really trying to tighten up those turns another big game changer for me is um, the vr because i can tilt my head as far as i want and i don't have to worry about the ir tracker losing the camera stuff like that it just makes a huge difference you know, being able to make keep an eye on your target is absolutely critical the video i recorded before this and I, and I might post it actually shows where i did lose track of my target and it and it was in vr but i i'd managed to lose track of him i'm like shooting straight up in the air with full afterburners on i'm spinning the craft so i'm just trying to look around anywhere to find the guy well, there were a few things that ended up screwing me on that. One, I lost momentum in the end. And I finally found it, but by the time I did, I couldn't really maneuver very well, and he managed to take me out uh, with a missile. So, you know, it's just a, VR is a big game changer.